Well, let's take a look at the scandal now of the disastrous school program uh, in KwaZulu-Natal. The company at the center of allegations of neglect and not meeting its service level agreements, Pasino Retail, has pulled out of the lucrative more than 1.2 billion rand contract. School pupils have gone hungry since the return of the second term. And now the ANC in the province says it has directed the provincial education department to terminate that contract. Problems range from the non and later delivery of food, insufficient food, and actually in some instances, the delivery of rotten, fresh produce. Becky Mtolo joins me now. Becky, good evening to you and welcome. Who's responsible for the mess? The department, the service provider, or both? Well, good uh, afternoon and good afternoon to your viewers. Uh, uh, I think that uh, our facts before us uh, at our disposal, for now we can conclude that uh, the, the service provider who, when he was evaluated, uh, the department thought it's got capacity, but uh, eventually failed this money to deliver what is expected of, 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 of the service provider. And as a result, in, in our own um, determination after receiving uh, the presentation to the MEC yesterday, it was clear to us that the contract has become a nullity and then therefore it is, uh, it is inevitable that it ought to be terminated. That's why we took a decision to direct the department to work within the framework of the of their own policies and the uh, service level document to yeah. uh, terminate the contract and then i think it has come to our uh, uh, attention that uh, i think uh, the service provider anticipated that uh, once we issued the alert that we are, we are briefing the nation today and will take bold and decisive steps and then the service provider on its own i think uh, it, it has withdrawn from the contract which i think uh, he should have done it long term, term ago because I think if you look at the, at the because the service provider uh, with the information we have was awarded on the basis that he, he, he relied on the support and the partnership they've entered between itself and, and SPAR group. But when SPAR wrote a letter to the service provider on the 24th of April, it was clear that uh, there's no way the service provider is going to meet those obligations because now their biggest partner, which was SPAR, and then was well, well, uh, pulled out. Yeah. And then, the, then the service provider was not genuine to the department. It's either should have came to the department and said, can you give me three months and, and or four months to start the program? But the service provider continued knowingly that he was not going to deliver. Does it raise red flags for you, um, uh, Becky, somebody who is not vetted properly? Because clearly it sounds like these arrangements and these partnerships on the actual delivery of the supplies or whatever that arrangement with that retailer would have been was actually not set. This person did not have the capacity to deliver. And I would suggest that the real responsibility then goes back to the provincial department. It goes back to the desk of MEC Mbali Fraser as to why this person was found to, to stand up to the scrutiny of those who were approving them for a tender. Yeah, because remember, if, uh, if, uh, if, even if it was you, if you come to the department through a, a bidding process and you, you, you submit documentary proof that your reliance uh, is with a, a reputable company, a huge a retailer, huge, uh, which has got a proven track record of in the food value chain, but not only the food value chain, but which has a footprint in the whole province in terms of logistical arrangement, including trucks, including warehouses and all that, but also retailers in each and every town. You would not at face value, even if it was you evaluating that this company may not deliver because there was all the supporting to do according to information we received. But you will only discover that when the service provider does not deliver. And it's clear that there are fallout between the server and SPA, which you don't know what, what has caused it, has rendered the, the service provider unable to deliver. Right, so then, you're saying mistake, all the supporting... Oh, I'm sorry, Becky, I, I interpreted that as a pause. You're saying all the relevance, and, and you've gone back to check this, all the supporting documents were in place, these uh, you know, service level agreements later on that would involve all of these other suppliers and partners were all there. There was no reason, you're saying 100%, um, that the officials in the administration should not have stopped this tender from going ahead. Yes, but, but remember, I'm using very strategic words here. I'm saying with the information we received from the department, I'm not saying this information is authentic. I'm saying with the information we received from the department. And then if the information from the department is, is any way to go out to be true when it's verified, then you would not have anticipated that service provider would have failed to deliver. 
All right, so what happens now? Um, you know, again, in South Africa, when things go wrong, when the finger of corruption is pointed at someone, uh, we often don't see that circle close fully in terms of accountability. What consequence management is now going to be undertaken? And does the service provider face any liability? Will there be charges instituted against Pasina Retail? You would understand that um, uh, I think let's not let's not mix issues. Let's separate issues so that we we deal them with correct uh, uh, perspective and legal and legal principles. Firstly, we we, we ought to determine uh, which is going to be done by those who are investigating. I, I I'm aware that the SIU has come in, and then the premier has also directed other entity agencies to come in. If they discover that in the award of the contract those who are sitting in the evaluation process and the adjudication process knowingly uh, and, and with facts presented before them and the documentary evidence and all the evidence and the material facts, knowingly that they knew that the service provider could not uh, have delivered this tender, they would have, they would have, con they would have acted irregular. Of course, there would be consequences. But remember, there's a difference between irregular appointment and failure to deliver. You can comply in terms of what was required by the department on evaluation and education, but failed to deliver. Failed to deliver is now become a contractual default. Now, what it ought to be telling me that did the service provider contractually default the contract that it entered between the department? Was the service provider, this is a, is a multi-prolonged stage inquiry. The first inquiry that ought to be determined in the investigation, was the service provider awarded legally or irregular? If the answer is no, the service provider was awarded irregular, then those who awarded the service provider irregular must be held uh, accountable. If the, the answer is, is, is in the affirmative that the service provider was, 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 was awarded uh, correctly, then the issue is that the service provider is defaulted. Then the service provider must take the claim because it has failed to deliver while it has presented itself as a legitimate service provider that can deliver. All right, we'll leave it there because we're out of time. But again, it's a story that has uh, a lot more questions that we need uh, to answer. And hopefully, as it does develop, we'll be able to, to fill in those blanks. ANC KZN Provincial Secretary Becky Mtolo.